Hey, good morning. Welcome to the West Winds Live Show. I am uh, your co-host, Scott Clown. And I'm your other co-host, Stephanie Belcher. We're happy you could join us today. And then we have a co-co. Co. Co. co, co host. host. Assistant yeah. to the co-host. Assistant to the co-host. In the event Sextant. that the co-host can't perform their duties. Uh, duties. Which Tim, happens. Tim will step in. Yes. Yeah. First he'll remove you, then he'll step in. Yes. Yes. Uh, but how are you today, Scott? I'm, I'm, great. I'm feeling I'm feeling wonderful today. Good. Feeling fantastic. We've had lots of coffee here at West Winds. One of my favorite things about West Winds. Drink coffee in the queue. So you've got tea. I do it's have wonderful. tea, yeah. lemon, mm -hmm. touch of sugar, it's delicious. But uh, how was your weekend? How was your Saturday? I had a good Saturday. I had a good Saturday. Did a um, stand-up comedy show yesterday, um, which was a lot of fun at the Michigan. Well, could you tell me a joke right now, no, Scott? No. <laughs> no. No. It was an 18 and older show. Uh, right. Things we can. It's a. It's a whole list. Basically, I, it's a whole list of things never to say at West Wing. Uh, so if you're, if you want some. Uh, <laughs> jokes from Scott, find him on Facebook and yeah. he'll send you them in a private message or see yeah. you do stand up next time. Yes, yeah, so uh, next show is February 13th, as a matter of fact, the, uh, oh. the night before Valentine's Day. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so you can find all the reasons why your significant other will no longer go on a date with you. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, so that was what your show was up to, but uh, what do we have coming up on our show? Coming up on our show, we have got Ben Redmond, of course, in the queue. We're going to continue our, our series on John. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the satellite groups for people to get involved with, including but not limited to the Westman's uh, live chat, which is something that you can be digitally involved with. Easy way to join in on a conversation if you want to do that kind of thing. Details on that coming up. Plus, we've got our recall video, which Tim is, is going to, to handle. Yeah, I've got one question for you guys at home. Are you mad, bro? <laughs> <laughs> We did talk about anger a little bit last week. Jesus got angry in John chapter 2, and Ben walked us through what that righteous anger was all about. Let's check it out. If the things that are, you are angry about, you look around and you go, you know what, I think I'm angry about the same things that anger God, then you got to respond. That is our responsibility at that point. Not to stay angry, not to make a really witty Facebook post, our, our obligation in that moment is to respond. And that's the truth, is that righteous anger always results in action. Welcome back. It is the live show. We are here, and we're on that camera right now. So I won't do the awkward thing of looking over here. I will look over we'll here. Look okay there. Yes. I'm Scott, Stephanie, Tim. Uh, we, we are, uh, we're in John. We are in the uh, book of the John, book a few John. weeks in. The book. The book of John. And uh, I thought it's is something kind of special. I test your knowledge of John's. John's? Yes. All right. Here Not the toilet. Not the toilet. Jackson. <laughs> okay. Right. No, no. Well, I've lived here a few years. Famous John's. <laughs> what is okay. your, your knowledge of famous John's? People like, John's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. I've got 12. Wow, that was a mesmerizing counting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm counting all the way there to myself. So, yes, and there'll be more counting. Don't worry. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your number one source for counting right here on the Westlands Live Show. <laughs> Next time, we go to 15. <laughs> Can you do it in Spanish too? Uno, dos, tres, donde esta el baño? Okay, here we go. Um, I've got a guitar pick. We're going to flip it. There's writing on one side. Okay. That's heads. So we're going to flip it. See who goes first. Tails. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, oh. It's on tails. It's on tails. So do you want to uh, ask or do you want to answer the questions first? I'll let uh, the lovely Tim to my left go first, the assistant to the regional manager. All right. Excellent. <laughs> the last one you look. Each one of you is going to have six questions about famous Johns. Okay. Whoever comes out with the highest score. Uh, will win a prize from Del Belcher's closet. Here we okay. go. Uh, number one, actor who starred in Say Anything and High Fidelity. Thank you, Zach. Very good. A uh, large flamboyant signature is located on the Declaration. John Hancock. There we go. Uh, 35th president of the USA, assassinated in 1963 by Lee Harvey Oswald. John F. Kennedy? Yes, very good. <laughs> Bonus points for the actor. Uh, English poet known for his epic poem, Paradise Lost. John Milton. Very good. Uh, let's see. Plays Jim on the U.S. version of The Office. 
John Lasseter. That's not the answer. No, it's not, not the answer we were looking for. You're John Krasinski. Dog on it. Too late. You already put your name. So much pressure. The Grammy Award winner who sings Ordinary People and Used to Love You. John Legend. Very good. Five out of six. Five out of six. In order to win. That was phenomenal. <laughs> Nicely done. In the John F. Kennedy, when they gave you the number, threw me a little bit. I'm like, yeah. 35. Then I'm like yeah. counting in my head. One, two, three. <laughs> Again with the counting. <laughs> we might go up to 35. Yeah. Wow. Stay tuned. Here we go. All right. Uh, famous Johns, because we're exploring the book of John. Okay. That's why we're doing John. Here we go. Uh, member of the Beatles who was married to Yoko Ono. John. Oh, my God. Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, John. It's not legend. Wow. <gasps> Lennon. Lennon, there we go. Okay. The Influential French, French theolo the theologian, uh, <laughs> and theolo the the that guy, and pastor during Theologian. the Protestant. Thank you. Thank you. Protestant re uh, Reformation. Did it's you get all that? Did it's you get all that? After him in Michigan. <laughs> he gets like an actor, and I get the famous theologian. Ah, uh, pass. Uh, NFL football announcer who popularized Turducken. John Madden. We're gonna do it here. We're gonna do it here. We're gonna do ball. Uh, actors <laughs> famous for movies like Spaceballs, Uncle Buck, and Cool Runnings. John Candy. There we are. There you go. Musician known for his song Body is a Wonderland. Uh, <laughs> awful. John Mayer. Author of Grapes of Wrath and of Mice and Men. Yes, you should. John Steinbeck. Yes, I was going to well try and give you a clue. Someone Thank took you. my beer, but he ended up giving me my... Steinbeck! Yeah. Right. Very nice. So we got a tie. I got a tiebreaker. Oh, wow. Oh, tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. We do have a tiebreaker. Wait, do we need it? Okay. This one, you just gotta, you just got to yell it out first. We'll have Dell, uh, who is impartial, not married to anyone on the panel. Um, mm -hmm. Here we go. Play Dan Connor on Roseanne. Dan Goodman. Oh, oh, we have a winner. We have a winner. <laughs> oh, wow. So, Who was the, the famous theologian? Did John you know? Calvin. John Calvin. That's what I thought, but in my head I could only think Calvin, and then I could only think Calvin Harris. And I'm like, Calvin Harris is whatever. I was like, it's John Calvin, but my... I was going to give you a hint. He liked to play with a tiger. Yeah. yeah. I was going to yeah. tiger. Calvin My mind yeah. got the best yeah. of me. I overthought it and then didn't. Overthought. You're definitely not Australian. Nope. No. So there you go. That that's our exploration of John, but uh, we're actually going to dive deep into it coming up here in just a minute. Yeah. He will. Redmond and the crew. Uh, if you guys have any questions at home while you're watching it, you can mm -hmm. submit them on Facebook or on YouTube uh, using the hashtag. Not on YouTube, on Facebook or Twitter, using the hashtag Ask West Winds. Yeah, you can always put those questions in the comments. Too. Yeah, you can put it on YouTube if you want to be a rebel. Yeah, I mean, it's just like put it on the video. Put it on YouTube. Do whatever you want, really. I mean, these are just suggestions. Whatever, Put it man. Under the title John Q. Public. Yeah. Because we need more cues. We do, we do. need more cues in the English language. It might have been the last show. <laughs> Nick yeah. Nick uh, Nick there's also some other things you can do online involving the church and giving. Yes. Uh, so if you're interested in doing tithing online at home, mm -hmm. you're able to do that. So you can go to the website westwinds.org slash giving, and there's an easy way to give there. You can also download the Secure Give apps. Yeah. And someone submitted a question to Westwinds asking what portion of their giving, if you give online, uh, is given back to Secure Give. And it's a really small percentage, so it's not, you know, it's not like 20% or substantial. So you can feel safe giving on there and, you know, giving goes to the church. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Auto withdrawal from the It's bank. called Tech Tide. Yes. And it is right from your bank account. And that is something that we in the in the Cloud family do, uh, and it's it's wonderful. It it just makes it easy. You know, when it's going to come out, it's not a surprise. It's a scheduled. So how date. do you sign up for that? Like, what do you do? You'd if have you to wanna... ask my wife. I, <laughs> I swear to you, I don't know. She just came to me and said, "Hey, we're getting online." Uh, okay. <laughs> right. I, you're right, dear. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Do you know how to do it? Anything that I can do to make my life. Actually, the tech tithe is kind of, you have to get like a check, a voided check, and like uh, send that in. And so it's a little more involved. But uh, signing up online is really easy. Like you just go to westwinds.org slash giving, and you just 
click a couple buttons, make an account, and it's super easy. And you just need your credit card information. So that's that's the easiest way to do it. We actually switched from, we were doing the tech tithe, uh -huh. we switched from that to doing online because it's easier to change the amount you give. Oh, okay. You can always just log in and say, you know, it wasn't a very good message this week, we give a little less. You know, we, don't do <laughs> <laughs> we like to, it's a way to score how well they're doing in the service. We grade our pastors. Up and down on the, Based no, on that. It's like the no, it is nice to be able to, to change it because, you know, like if our financial situation shifts and we can give more that's great we love doing that so um, it's a it's a nice setup but anything that makes my life easier one less thing to do so why well, make it difficult right yeah my goal in life is to just be able to lie in bed and do nothing as much as I can the computers have officially taken over yeah. everything is automated you don't have to think anymore yeah it's like the movie Wally -E. that's my dream that's my dream, is to be those people. I've never heard that about yeah. that movie. All of it. Just all of it. Just trash you. You've never seen Wally? -E? I've never seen Wally. -E. I watched the beginning part and it seemed sad to me, so I just completely passed it. Oh, you oh. need to watch Wally. -E. Do I? Is that yes. where it's at? It is. It is. Yep. That is where it's at. We found I don't know it. You can be there. a contributing member of society without having <laughs> watched Wally. -E. Yeah, that's <laughs> where we draw the line. Yeah, right there. That's where the line is. You know, just take off the mic and go. Yeah, you're just, out of here. You're out of here. <laughs> watch Wally. -E. Turned off Wally. -E. Like, I, just, I'm not going to be saddened right now. I have issues when you personify a robot. I just mm. can't associate with it. So whenever someone, like, gives someone's characteristics to that, I just, I can't. I try, and I'm like, I still know that you're a robot. I can't think of you as, <laughs> yeah. I can't think of you as having uh, human qualities. Everything well, is but, anyway. but is it okay with animals? With animals, you don't have a problem. Like, like Lion King, not a problem? That I can do. Okay, gotcha. Maybe it's because I grew up with that a little bit more. Pet robots? Pet robot? no. I yeah, didn't no have a pet robots. robot. Yeah, I need a Tamagotchi. I, like. I tell you, a man who is not a robot. He's a real man. Mm -hmm. Ben Redman. He, he is a real man. He's amazing. Down. Real boy. He's a real boy. He's a real boy. He's a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's head into the queue and see what Ben's up to. Morning, everybody. So, this week, I did something that in 40 years of life, I have not done yet. Uh, for the first time in my life, drum roll please, I went camping. Now, I know that as soon as you see me and then hear me say that, instantly you wish you were able to experience it with me and um, see all the pictures, and I'm sure it's not hard to uh, imagine uh, how that went for me, but I've never gone camping, yet I have a group of friends, four or five guys, who uh, do this uh, trip like this every year. They're probably my best friends, and every year they try to ask me to go, and I you know, schedule all my dentist appointments around the trip and uh, <clears throat> try to set it up so there's no possible way I can go, and this year I couldn't do that, so for the first time I experienced uh, the, the life and love of camping in all of its splendor. And <clears throat> probably about a month ago, I, I started really thinking about the trip and, and, and that far out I was still okay. You know, I, I was like, well, it's not going to be that bad. Right? Everything will be fine. I'm with my friends. They know what to do. And then as I got closer and closer, this kind of dread and panic and fear started to set in a little bit. And I found myself a couple nights ago, you know, blankets up by my head, tossing and turning in the night going, they're not really my friends. They're, <laughs> they're not here to help me. They're here to make fun of me. I'm going to get eaten by a bear. There, there's no indoor bathroom. I don't know what that looks like in the world or how to experience something like that. And so in the, in the 24 hours before we left on this trip, I realized that there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know, and I didn't know how to ask it without feeling dumb and looking like the guy who never goes camping, you know? So I just started texting my friends who were going on the trip and kind of asking them, you know, little leading questions and uh, acting like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't really. So, you know, I'd text my friend Nate and go, yeah, they're, they're kidding about bringing your own toilet paper, right? That's not a real thing. There, there aren't places that exist in Michigan where there's no toilet paper, right? And, and try to ask these questions in a way that wouldn't make me feel silly. I texted my friend Mike and said, hey, what kind of stuff are you bringing? Send me a list of everything that you're bringing. I went to Walmart the, the day we were leaving and you know bought out their long underwear department because um, I was worried that somehow I was going to get frostbite. But obviously I survived and I'm okay. But what's interesting about that is I bet most of us have had a moment somewhere where we have been in an experience and we felt like we should know more than we do, like, like who's 40 and hasn't gone camping before, you know, and you feel like you should know more than you know. And as a result of that, you kind of try to find a way to just, you know, skirt around the edge to just, you know, dip one toe in the pool, if you will. And, and, and we do all that so we don't look silly. 
because no one wants to be embarrassed. And if you've ever felt like that, if you've ever had a moment where you felt embarrassed because of something you didn't know, or if you felt uh, a little bit like, like you weren't sure how to approach a situation uh, without looking foolish, then you'll probably really understand the character that we're going to look at this morning. Uh, we're continuing our way through the book of John. We're in John chapter 3, looking at the story of Nicodemus, uh, this man. So let's take a look at these verses and, and see if you can, and can figure out what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Uh, it says, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. Now, that's all you really need to know about the person of Nicodemus. He was a Jewish leader and a Pharisee. As a Jewish leader, a Jewish religious leader, excuse me, that means Nicodemus was respected. That means he had influence. That means people would come to him to ask for answers about things going on. He was a respected member of the community, and he was a leader, much like we might think of someone in political office as being a leader now. He was very, very respected, but he was also a Pharisee. Now, within this group of religious leaders, there was a specific group known as the Pharisees, and and their job specifically was to help people make sure that they obeyed all of the law. So the Pharisees took all of the rules and then broke those rules down into sub-rules and so on and so forth, which means that Nicodemus would have been a, a master of the Scripture. Like he would have known the law, the Bible that they had in the Old Testament. He would have known all of those rules. And people would come to him when they had questions so he could give them answers, which is why the next words in the story don't really make that much sense. It says, Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee, After dark one evening, he comes to speak with Jesus. Some translations say that um, at, at night he came to speak with Jesus. Now, this doesn't make any sense because these guys were normally very loud and proud. I mean, they had an entourage that came with them. They, they went the places that they went with great fanfare. They wanted to be seen. So it doesn't make a lot of sense that a religious leader would come to Jesus at night. I mean, there's many places in the Gospels where Jesus was right in the middle of teaching and a group of religious leaders interrupted him to ask him a question to try to trap him or trick him. I mean, this is what they did. They had no problem being loud and disrupting Jesus. Yet we see this one guy who comes to Jesus in the middle of the night. And the question is why? I mean, what makes someone who is respected, someone who is known as an expert in the law? It says later in the passage, what makes this person come to Jesus at night? The same thing that makes me text all my friends little random questions about going camping. I mean, he doesn't want to look dumb. He's supposed to know this stuff already, and yet he doesn't. He's hearing teachings from Jesus that he's never heard before, and he has so many questions, and he doesn't want to look stupid, so he comes to him at night. Additionally, he's not even sure he wants to be seen with this group, of, with, with Jesus, because the religious leaders, these other uh, Pharisees and the other uh, J- Jewish religious leaders, wouldn't exactly think it was great that he was buddying up with this guy who was teaching different things. So Nicodemus has a lot on the line here, and he's just not convinced. He's just not sure that this is a guy he should be talking to. He's not sure about what this guy is saying. He's not sure about any of it. So he comes at night. And I think the reason that this is is important for us to note is that many of us probably have had a similar experience. I mean, if you've been following Jesus for a long time, then this probably doesn't apply to you in generalities. It's probably more a specific thing. But I know for myself, there are areas of my life that I'm just not convinced yet that I want to give over to Jesus fully. There's stuff that I hold on to in my own heart that I'm just going, I I don't know if I can trust him with this. I don't know if what he says about this matches up with what I want to do. So I kind of dip one toe in the pool just to see if it's okay. And if you haven't been following Jesus for a long time, if you're brand new to all of this, if you're still trying to figure this out, then this might apply to you in broad generalities. You might just look at all this and go, dude, I don't know if I can trust him. I don't know if I want to trust him. I don't know if this makes sense. I mean, I've met enough Christians and seen enough weird church stuff that I'm not sure that all of this is actually what I want to do. Right? You'd be a lot like Nicodemus who just goes, I'm not sure that I'm in. So I'm going to find the least risky way possible, if you want to say it like that. I'm going to find the simplest, smallest, tiniest step I can take. I'm going to come to him when nothing is on the line, when no one's looking, and I'm just going to see what this is all about. And if you've ever felt like that before, felt like you've got something that you don't want to give up to him, or felt like you're not sure overall, you've got to see his response in this. Because if this was me, 
I think I would have a specific response to somebody who said, hey, look, I'm not sure I want to be your friend. So I'm just going to come talk to you when no one else is around. So I'm not associated with you. I mean, can you imagine if that's what I'd done with my wife when we were dating? I said, look, I really want to get to know you. I think there's some chemistry here. So, so let's, let's get to know, but let's do it on the down low because I got some other relationships going on. I don't want it to interfere and I don't want people to see us together. Now she did that to me, but I'm not, I'm not allowed to do that to her. Right. <laughs> right. Because if I did that to her, what, what's going to happen? She's going to go, are you crazy? No, you don't get to pick and choose. You don't get to come and say, well, whenever, whenever I feel like it, I'm in relationship with you. It doesn't work that way. Either you're in or you're out. That's what almost all of us would do in a situation where someone says, I'm too embarrassed to talk to you in the day. I'm not sure I trust you, but let me ask you some questions. But look at what Jesus says here. Nicodemus comes to him and says, Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. I mean, translation of all that is Nicodemus going, dude, what's up? Like, what is this all about? And the next two words, I think are what are important here. It says, Jesus replied. Jesus replied. At a time when someone came to him and said, hey, I don't want to be seen with you in the light of day. I'm not sure that I trust you. You might be crazy, but what's going on? Jesus answered that person. Isn't that interesting? So interesting to me that Jesus takes the time to to, to talk to someone who doesn't really seem like they're that interested in talking to him. And this is so important for us to understand because if you're here today and you feel like you're on the outside, if you feel like you're on the fringe, if you feel like you're just not sure and you're not convinced yet, here's what you need to know. Jesus will reply to you. He's ready to answer you. It doesn't matter how you come to him. It doesn't matter where you come to him, why you come to him, when you come to him, middle of the night, any of time. It doesn't matter. He's ready to respond to you. See, we kind of have this belief, this idea in, in religion and in the church that you've got to belong, believe, excuse me, before you can belong. It's kind of like, you know, if you're at a resort or a beach, how they have the, the shower outside of the pool. They like take a shower before you get in the pool. That's kind of how we think that church works. Let me get all cleaned up. Let me make everything nice, everything pretty, figure everything out so that I can quote it, you know, line by line, and then I can belong. But listen, I've read the Bible up, down, back, (laughs) forward, left, right. Jesus doesn't say that. He doesn't say it anywhere. Rather, he says exactly the opposite. He continually invites people to belong first. And really what Jesus says is, if you follow me, if you investigate me, if you belong with what I'm doing, you will believe. Because I'm faithful. You'll you'll figure it out. Jesus invites us to belong before we believe. It's, it's, It's almost like Jesus lets us come to him before we even believe in him. And that's a powerful thing to know. But, but why would he do that? I mean, why does Jesus allow this guy to come to him at night? Well, the only reason could be love. That's what motivates someone to do something like that, is love. You know, I uh, have, uh, my, my daughter is my firstborn child. And I remember when she was firstborn, those first moments, I remember that doctor handing her to me and me holding her in my arms. And I have a, a sappy, emotional dude. As a matter of fact, at one point when I was holding her, the nurse came up and said, sir, sit down. I do not want you to drop that baby while I'm in this room. And, you know, I'm crying in a mess and I'm holding this little girl. And I remember she's just minutes old in my arms. And I said to her, I said, Kayla, I'm your dad. I love you so much. And I want you to know that I'm always going to be here for you. And I'm always going to be here with you. I'm, I'm, I'm your father. And it was just this moment for me that was powerful. And as my daughter grew up, man, we were like this. Daddy, daughter, she was a daddy's girl. We'd go on these little dates, go on these little trips. It was amazing. I loved it. And then something happened. Anyone who's a dad, you've a parent, you've experienced this. And I remember when it happened. She's 12 years old, walking through a parking lot, and I reach down and grab her hand, and she pulls, you know, pulls away like that. What are you doing? Like, go back to your creepy van, you know? Why? <laughs> What are, why do you have your hand on me right now? And I'm, I don't even know how to respond. I'm like, well, I, just, I thought, and she, and she goes, you, you get, people are watching. <laughs> and shortly after that, she's with a group of her friends at the mall and I go to pick her up, right? And I walk into her group of friends, like, you know, hey everybody, how's it going? Talking to everybody. And I look in her eyes and there is death staring back at me and we get out to the car and she says you cannot in front of my friends like that don't do that please 
And I remember just having this feeling like, oh no, everything's changing. Like she's, she's different from the little girl that I held in my arms. But you know what's interesting? There's still lots of moments where she comes to me and she'll say, dad, I need help. Dad, I, I need advice. Dad, can we go get coffee? And you know what I say to her? Absolutely not. Either you're in or you're out. <laughs> of course I don't say that. Of course I don't say it, but, but listen, here's why I don't say that. Because my relationship with her, it's not a, based on her. I didn't hold her in her arms and she as long as you do your part, this will work out. That wasn't what I did. When, when she literally came from my wife and I. She is ours. She's our creation in that, in that sense. And so the, our relationship was built on my love for her. That was the deal. And no matter how she changes as she works her way through uh, adolescence, no matter how things change for her, that doesn't change my commitment to her because she is my child. She's my daughter. And I have committed that I'm going to love her, which means whenever she comes to me for whatever reason, even if her motives is just that she wants Starbucks and she knows I can drive her there. Whatever her reason for coming to me, my answer is always yes, because I love her. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the worst possible way at the wrong possible time saying, dad, don't embarrass me in front of my friends. And Jesus says, here I am, I'll respond. And the way Jesus responds to Nicodemus is absolutely incredible. It's a long, long passage here. It's actually verse 3 through verse 21. And it would take a couple hours probably for me to go through verse by verse and explain all the cool stuff that's going on here. Uh, I, I have that kind of time, but I'm getting the sense you probably don't. So uh, we, won't, we won't go that route here. But fortunately, the whole sum of everything Jesus says is summed up in one verse. And it's the most famous verse in all of the Bible. It's the verse you see held up at the sports games. If you, know, if you don't know anything about anything about anything about Christianity, and someone says, well, John 3, 16, you go, oh yeah, that's a thing, right? It's something. Everybody knows this. And if you've been around the church for any amount of time, you probably know this verse by memory. But maybe you've never realized that this verse is a direct response from Jesus to Nicodemus. When Nicodemus is saying, who are you and what is this about? And why should I take another step towards you? And here's what Jesus says. You want to know why you should follow him? Here's the answer. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Think of the power of this moment as a man, Nicodemus, who's not even, is not even convinced enough to come to Jesus in the light of day, stands in front of Jesus and says, who are you? And Jesus says, I'm the one who'll take your place. I'm the one who will die so you don't have to. I'm the one who will give my life so that you can have yours. Jesus sums up for Nicodemus the whole of the gospel. He says, I loved you so much that I didn't stay far away, but instead I came here. You know, a lot of times in, in Christianity, we like to say things like Jesus is the answer to every question. Maybe it makes a great Facebook post. We say Jesus is the solution to your problem. And that sounds really cheesy to say, but the reason that most of us kind of go, I'm not sure I'm buying that. And even the reason that a lot of us don't enter into Christianity to, to begin with is because we hear those things and go, that, that, there's no way that can be true. Jesus can't be the answer to the question because yesterday I prayed for money and I lost the Powerball. <laughs> is that Jesus doesn't say that he is the answer to all of our little questions. He doesn't say that he'll give us an answer to everything we ask. I mean, there's sickness in the world, there's death, there's issues, there's problems. What Jesus says instead is not that I'm, that, that he doesn't say I'll give you the answer to every question. He says, I am the answer. And I am the answer to the biggest question you have. See, here's the reality for all of us. Our biggest problem is not the problem of the day. Our biggest problem is that we're separated from God. Our biggest problem is that in our humanity, there's nothing we can do that can make things right with God again. We can't reconcile that relationship on our own. It can only happen through God himself. Only God can bring us back to God. And that's what Jesus is saying to Nicodemus in this passage. He's saying, when you could not do this on your own, here's what I've done for you. I love you. I've come for you so that if you believe in me, you can have life. And that really drives us to our response to this. Jesus says it to Nicodemus. He says, you've got to choose. You've got to choose where you're going to place your trust. You have to choose to believe in me 
or choose to believe in something else. And that really is the choice for us. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but it certainly is simple. The choice is, is, is do I believe in Jesus or do I put my trust in anything else in the world? Those are our two options and we have to decide where we're going to choose. And if we decide to take our trust and place it in anything other than Jesus, here's what you're going to find, that eventually that trust will fade. Eventually there is nothing else in life that you can put all of your trust and all of your hope in that will not eventually let you down. You can put it in your money, you can put it in your success, you can put it in your moment of fame, you can put it in your relationships, you can put it in your career, you can put it anywhere you want. But eventually those things break down. You lose the job, you age, even if you age well, right? You, you, you're no longer, your spotlight moment is gone. All of those things fade. But the opposite is true in the other direction. If you put your trust in Jesus, what you find is that he's actually more faithful than you thought he was. If you take one little step towards Jesus, you'll find that he's faithful. And in another one, you'll find that he's more faithful and so on and so forth. The more you trust in Jesus, the more you experience that he's not gonna let you down that he's everything that he says he is, that John 3, 16 is actually true, that he loves you and he loves you so much that he sacrificed for you and a life built around him isn't one that will go away no matter what problems you have today or tomorrow or the next. So we have to make that choice. We have to decide who it is that we're going to trust. And the more that we put our trust in Jesus, the more that we will find that our lives will change. And you don't see this more clearly anywhere than in the story of Nicodemus himself. We see Nicodemus mentioned a couple other times in in the book of John. The first place we see him is here in John 3, when he comes to Jesus at night, not convinced, not sure what he should do. And Jesus tells him how much he loves him. Jesus shares with him the truth, the hope of the gospel. The next place we see Nicodemus is in John chapter 7. Uh, Jesus has incited a riot from some of his teaching, and people are, are rushing him to kill him. And in that moment, Nicodemus, who's again a religious leader, stands up and says, you can't do that without taking him to trial. In essence, the man who wouldn't say, who wouldn't even talk to Jesus in the light of day, comes and stands in Jesus' defense. And then at the end of the book of John, we see Nicodemus make an even bolder move. It's after Jesus has been crucified and some of Jesus' followers have come to take his body down from the cross. In Roman culture, when someone was crucified, they'd leave your body up to rot as a way to remind you of the consequence of messing with the Roman government. Some followers of Jesus come and request permission to take his body down. And at the end of John, it says, they took his body down from the cross and Nicodemus, the one who came to Jesus at night, was there. He brought 75 pounds of spices to help wrap his body. This was not a good time to be a follower of Jesus. He had just died. His disciples, if you remember, are scattered in hiding in places. And yet here's a guy that wouldn't even come to him in the light of day that stands with him and carries his body from the cross. Why? Because he came to Jesus with something, even when he wasn't convinced that he could give him everything. I mean, think about it. Isn't it weird that the thing that Nicodemus did that was the most trusting was to actually come to Jesus when he didn't trust him at all? But yet in that process of just going, I'm not ready to give you everything, but I'll give you something. I'll trust you with something, even though I don't trust you with everything. That process allowed him to experience the love and faithfulness of God and led him forward to the point where in the biggest moment, he carries Jesus from the cross and says, I stand with this man. And that's my prayer for us. You might be here today and feel like you are on the outside, feel like the only way you could come to Jesus is at night. Your motivations for being here might be really shady at best. But the reality is this. The promise of God is that you, if you trust him with something, eventually you'll trust him with everything because you'll find out that he's faithful. One of my favorite verses, Psalm 25 verse 3, says this. Throw it up on the screen there if we can. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. That word disgrace can be replaced with the word disappointed or put to shame. That's the promise. No one who puts their trust in God will ever feel stupid. No one who puts their trust in God in the end will ever regret doing that. Because the more you trust him with something, the more it will make sense to trust him with everything because you'll see that he's faithful. 
Let me pray for us. God, thanks for today and thanks for this um, amazing story. God, thanks for the simple reminder that you love us. God, that we can come to you just as we are. That it doesn't matter how we come. It doesn't matter why we come, when we come or where we come. That you welcome us with open arms because we are yours. Because you love us with the heart of a father. God, nothing that we do can impress you. And in the same way, the things we do don't disappoint you. you. You love us based on who you are. It says in your word that your promises are backed by the power of your name. And so, God, that's what we put our hope in. So today, whether we've been doing this for a long time or whether we're brand new, God, help us to trust you with something today and then see your faithfulness so that we can give everything we have to you. We love you. Amen. We're going to um, take part in communion uh, today. Uh, sometimes we, we refer to communion as the Eucharist, uh, which is a word that means good gift. And much like we just talked about, this is a time where we once again say that we're giving God what we have. This is a time to remember what he's given to us, to remember that the promises from God are, are from God to us. He's the one that promises and to rescue us, to be with us, and to give us his grace and mercy. So today as we take the bread that represents his body broken and the cup that represents his blood spilt out for us, uh, we do this remembering. Everyone, we hope you enjoyed that message uh, from the book of John and from Ben Memphis. Yeah, it was a good message today. I thought it was fun how he talked about pools. <laughs> what did you, what did you like about the pool topic? <laughs> well, I like how he was saying that he doesn't understand why people shower or are required to shower before they enter a public pool. So you can be clean first. Yeah, I thought that's obvious, but apparently to Ben, it's been a mystery. Well, the good thing about the pools, though, as compared to Jesus, is in order yes. to come to the pool, you should be clean. But in order to come to Jesus, not necessary. <laughs> not necessary. Come dirty, as Les Wins used to say. Yeah, it was, wasn't there a billboard with that on there? It, yeah, it was a we got of it. You, right? It was a picture of me. It was come as horribly morally depraved as this man, and then look that, at this guy. All right. We let him in. Yeah, yeah. And so. everything turned out fine. We got in trouble for that, though. Oh, I bet. Westwind's trouble, yeah. I do like that message, though, because sometimes I think people think that you have to be perfect and do sure. everything right before Jesus will, you know, let you in, but... Yeah. Fortunately. Yeah, it's a great message for everything, really, because I know people think that about church, but I also think just in society at large that people feel that they're disqualified from um, public discourse or from entering into... You know, doing anything brave or daring or risky, that they have to have it all together before they do that. Which really, uh, we don't. You know, we just dare great things whenever. So that's a beautiful message in general. Yeah. We should make a meme for that. <laughs> right? Get on it, internet. Just do it, and then we could have like a check mark logo. That would be like, yeah, just do it. Yeah. What do like, you think? The check mark and the just do it. It sounds like this may have been done before. No, but I think it's brilliant. It's, okay. My Good. idea. We're Good. gonna patent that. All right, Stephanie Belcher. With the um, new ideas. But we have uh, Ben Redman here joining us in the live show studio. Yeah. He's going to answer your questions uh, mm -hmm. that you guys submitted. So we're going to shoot on over to Ben and Scott Clow. Ben Redman. Yeah. Yeah. Excited to get to talk to you about plagiarism today. Apparently, that's a <laughs> yes. copyright infringement. Yes, yes. I don't know what you're talking about. There's many loopholes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for those of you that are wondering uh, where exactly I came from, I actually emerged from the magical land of Narnia, the gateway being this My pocket. pocket right there. That is where I came from. And, uh, All life stems from these pockets. <laughs> Hearts, right? The seat of humanity. It's, it's the cradle, it's, cradle of life. It's the left breast pocket <laughs> of Ben Redmond's coat. Do people still say breast pocket? I believe I just okay, did. Excellent. Excellent. You heard that. That just yes. happened. Uh, great sermon on John. Thank you. And uh, I guess, you know, we've all heard John 3.16, but I guess I never knew it was a conversation that, yeah. that Jesus had with Nicodemus where he just laid that on him and said, 
reflect on that, buddy. Yeah, and what, the other the other part that's interesting about that is everyone knows John three sixteen. No one knows John three seventeen, which actually because we added the verses later uh, was actually part of the same conversation. Which is the part where Jesus says, um, you know, God's so love the world, He gave His only Son. Anyone who believes in Him, and then He says, and I haven't come here to judge the world or condemn it, but I've come here to save it. Which is interesting because a lot of times people pull John three sixteen out of context and you know turn or burn. I say. Uh, you know, hey, this is what you need to know: get right or get left. And um, <laughs> yeah, and and but the reality is, this was all part of Jesus responding to someone who was reaching out to him in faith, and then saying, uh, you know, this is good news. This is the good news that I've come, and it's not, you know, the the end of it isn't isn't the 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 parish part. <laughs> uh, it's I I'm not coming to judge the world. I'm coming I'm coming to give people hope and an opportunity. So, yeah, it puts a lot of uh, skin and bone to it when you realize it's part of an ongoing conversation. Um, there, there's a really overused phrase, but I think when it comes to today's sermon, it's pretty applicable. There are no dumb questions. Right. So if, if you're coming to Jesus in, in the dark, uh, meaning that you, you, you kind of feel like, well, I don't want a whole lot of people knowing about this. But even if there is a question like you had, like you calling your buddy and saying, do we really have to bring our own toilet paper <laughs> right, camping? Exactly. Did you? Uh, I was told that I did not, when in reality I did. Okay. Um, that was one of their pranks. Right. Was it one a of very, their very unfortunate discovery of what poison um, oak looks like? <laughs> yes, yeah, I, actually it was. Um, yes, it was. The Douglas fir is not kind. <laughs> so, to that, for those, the, those people out there that are, are looking to come to Jesus, yeah. and, and they're in the dark, mm -hmm. um, and they're looking for that opening volley, that opening, that opening question, Mm -hmm. I, what in your mind, and I know it's all opinion based yeah, and, sure. and situation based, but in your mind, what was the first question that you kind of asked Jesus in the dark? Yeah, I, I think for me, really the first one when I got serious about this was just to say, why, why did you come here? Like, which is really the essence of what Nicodemus is asking. Like, if I believe that Jesus showed up here, you know, on this earth and was who he claimed to be, wh why? What, what was important? What was important to you? Because I think. That's a great way to be able to start recognizing that a lot of the things we in the church have said are important to him are not any of the things that he said, you know, initially. You know, when, when, when people came to him and said, um, you know, I'm in, I'm in trouble, can you help? His first answer wasn't, you know, Sunday school or, or any of those kind of things. Rather, it was, you know, this is who I am. So I think any question that, that says, how do I get to know what matters to you or why you showed up here? Um, it's a great question. I really think it's the precursor question to the question, why am I here, uh, that people ask all the time. You know, I mean, adolescents especially, well, why, why am I here? I think the first question is, well, why do you, why do you think God showed up here? Because I think those things are connected. So I think that's a, I think that's a good place to, to, to start is just to say, what did, what did he do when he showed up here and why did he do it? So to that, I mean, we've talked an awful lot about asking the questions, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of time as Christians, we're in the position to answer the question. Yes. And there's a fear there of being too evangelical. Right. How, how do you encourage people to, to overcome that and, and really turn on the spotlight? Right. Well, well, you, you mean when someone's asking yeah. you a question about your faith? Yeah. yeah I mean, what... It, 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 I'm sure there's a lot of variation you can answer that, but for me, one of them is just is just being humble. I mean, it's there's there's something there's something about setting yourself up as an expert, you know, unless you are an expert in many fields such as yourself. But there's something about um, setting yourself up as an expert that that can lend itself to being kind of dangerous. So I think the more that when people are asking that one, we are you know we're we're willing to say you know I'm not sure that I know the answer to that all the way, and then point people back to. To Jesus, and point them, point them to the stuff that Jesus is, has said and what He's doing, or even better yet, say, well, let's look at this together, you know, and try to figure, you know, figure out what this is. But at the at the same time, the other thing I'd say about that is, I wouldn't be afraid to give an answer to someone, even if you don't feel like you have all the answers. That's for a lot of people. They go, well, I, how could I help anyone? Because I don't know anything. But the reality is um, that just your own story. Of, of what it means to you is is something that is is powerful for most people. I mean, when I you know when when I say to you, I, I don't know you know, or I, I don't know if I should trust in this, and you go, you know what? There's a lot about it that's weird, but what I can tell you is that I've given my life to this, and it's made me better. It's made my, my marriage better, my family better. It, you know, it's anchored me in something, and I haven't figured it out. And man, that's powerful, you know. As always, good stuff from Ben. You got to get going. You got to get back in the queue. Tune in next week. See you.
We'll find out. We know where his left breast pocket goes, but where does the right breast pocket go? Stay tuned, and we'll let you know all about that coming up next week. If you have questions about pockets or anything that we talked about in the book of John, there's a few ways that you can get those questions answered or discuss them with people that may know the answer or may think that they know the answer. Uh, one of the ways you can do that is with West Wind's chat. Yeah, West Wind's chat. That's uh, 8.30s. 8.30. On Monday, tomorrow. Monday. Where do they meet? Uh, Facebook. Weird place to meet, but a cool place to meet. Everything is online these days. Yeah, these days, kids and their computers. Uh, so if you want to join in uh, the West Winds chat, you can do yeah. that tomorrow, 8.30. Ask any questions, meet up with people. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have beers and Bibles. Beers and Bibles. The, the, finally, someone has brought them two together. Yes. Yes. It's kind of like the folks over at Reese's. They brought together chocolate and peanut butter. Geniuses. Beer, Bible, conversation, natural marriage. Exactly, exactly. So uh, that meeting. When do they meet? When, uh, I know they're at the road on Wednesday. Wednesday. There you are. Wednesday, six thirty. Roadhouse. Yep. Join up. Bring your own Bible. Have discussions over beer. Talk about pockets. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Where do your pockets go? Uh, my pockets go down mostly, <laughs> <laughs> and then, then they okay. stop. <laughs> 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 that would be the the purpose of a pocket. They're not enchanted yet. No, no. You could lose a lot of change if they didn't stop. Yeah, I'm I'm actually against change as a rule. I think it's a waste of everyone's time. As evident by the fact we had to flip a guitar pick yeah. because nobody has a coin. <laughs> right. No coin. Here within the travel light. live show. Not not one. Uh, more ways to get involved with the church. Uh, there are satellite groups, yes. too. There's a few that are open right now. So a satellite group is a group of people that get together once a week, every other week, and they just talk about Jesus, what the church is doing. Uh, but there's a few ways that you can get involved in that. Who do you have to contact? Well, there's a couple of different satellites, one being uh, Women of West Winds. Women of West Winds, it's a well-established satellite group here, but they are accepting new members, and you can call Diane Stevens. Uh, at 517-788-9715, or you can just log on to westwinds.org. All the information is going to be there about the different ways that you can get together and talk to people of like mind, where things are a little bit brighter as far as uh, you're, not, you're not going to talk to Jesus in the dark. It's more of a, a warm, ambient glow. Yeah. Other people that are interested in talking about what you're interested in talking about yeah. most of the time. And we should say that Women of Westwinds is for women you know, to get together with other women. Yes. It's not for single men who are looking to meet women. No. And I don't think we've had that yeah. problem happen <laughs> yet, but it's yeah. good to have the clarification. I mean, we're just clarifying so, it. This is the internet. Let's never know what's out there. They don't, they don't like that. They don't like that. Brown on that. Especially even with a wig and a fake British accent. Yeah. You found out again, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was odd. Mm. I, think, I think it was the beard that threw him. Probably. Mm. Probably. Not the, the heels. Beard. Oh, the heels I can pull off. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing those heels. You're wearing them right now, aren't you? I am. I am. Why not? Coaches. Uh, do they make coach shoes? <laughs> yes. Know. I don't know if they make coach heels. I think so. I but don't coach know. purses have lots of pockets, and it could be your gateway <laughs> to the magical land of Narnia. <laughs> but your gateway to all things West Winds, of course, westwinds.org. Uh, check that out. Of course, we're right here at the corner of Robinson and McCain. Yeah. Stop on out three queues every Sunday. We'd love to see you here, and uh, we'd love to, to chat with you in the lobby afterwards. Yeah. So come on out, please. Send us a message. On a scale of 1 to 10, how awkward is Scott Clow? 10 being Scott Clow, and <laughs> 1 being as far away from Scott Clow as you get. We want, we want the feedback. We want to hear your thoughts. Send us in on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> we Not also want to. Mom, I know you're watching. <laughs> We also want to thank our wonderful crew for keeping us yeah. on task. Yes. Managing Look everything. Look at them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess, That's thank good. you for being along with us this time. Until next time, we're the West Winds crew. Have a great week. Woo! Hi, Mom. <laughs>